to present initial scientific findings surrounding the object now known as the Buga Sphere. The government insists you already know the truth, yet the Buga Sphere story begins with details they never told you. This is the, the antenna, uh, and they are able to broadcast from the fiber optics to the antenna and from there to somewhere else. Strange reactions, hidden data, and a silent scramble behind the scenes point to something far bigger than an ordinary crash. What you are about to hear is everything they hoped would stay buried. The night the silence broke, authorities insisted the public already knew everything important about the Buga Sphere, yet the truth is that the very first moment of real danger happened quietly in the middle of the night, long before any official statement was issued. Power grids in western Colombia began flickering without warning, alarms triggered inside a regional substation, and technicians scrambled through dark hallways lit only by emergency bulbs. Outside, in a field that should have been silent, a low mechanical hum spread across the hills in a slow, rising pulse that felt almost alive. At the center of it all sat the same metallic orb the government described as stable and inactive. On this night, it was neither. Witnesses recalled the air cooling around it, the grass trembling as if responding to a hidden vibration, and instruments losing entire lines of data the moment the hum intensified. One technician said the sphere looked unchanged on the surface, small and perfectly still, yet everything around it felt like it had shifted. Radios died, compasses drifted, and the lights in the substation struggled to stay on. Officials later labeled this a routine electrical disturbance, but those who were there reported something different. They watched a four-pound object pull energy from its surroundings, disrupt local infrastructure, and emit a sound no one could trace or measure with familiar tools. They did not know what it meant, only that it contradicted every public assurance issued since the crash. That confusion became the starting point of a larger question. If this was only one moment in a long chain of unusual events, then what exactly did the authorities leave out when they told the world the sphere was harmless? The deeper facts begin with how the object first entered Colombia, hidden in plain sight. If the government ever intended to be transparent about the Buga Sphere, the earliest hours after its arrival should have been the moment to do it. The object did not slip into Colombia unnoticed. It entered with a spectacle no official summary ever fully acknowledged, and that silence created the first gap between what happened and what people were told. On March 2, 2025, residents near Guadalajara de Buga watched the sky erupt in a soft white glow that shifted to deep blue as a metallic object cut across the horizon. Some described it moving with sharp, unnatural turns. Others said it descended as if guided rather than falling. Whatever the interpretation, the landing itself was unmistakable. It touched down in a remote patch of farmland, carving a shallow indentation in the soil and leaving a perfect circle of dead vegetation that seemed to wither on contact. Emergency responders arrived first, drawn by reports of interference affecting phones, radios, and handheld navigation tools. Their equipment behaved strangely as they approached the crash site. Compasses rotated without settling, digital displays glitched into unreadable symbols, and several responders noted a sudden drop in temperature inside the landing zone. None of this appeared in the public briefing. Instead, the official line portrayed a simple retrieval of harmless debris. The object they found could not have been mistaken for ordinary metal. It was a flawless orb, small enough to hold with one hand, but heavier than its size suggested. Its surface carried no seams, no screws, and not a single mark from impact. Symbols covered the shell in tight, precisely spaced patterns that resembled no known alphabet. Witnesses compared them to the sharp lines of Norse runes, the vertical strokes of Ogham, or the angular wedges of ancient cuneiform. Yet side by side, none of those systems matched what they saw. Within hours, federal personnel secured the area and restricted access. Soil samples were removed under protective protocols, but the lab results that later surfaced in private correspondence never appeared in public databases. Those early samples showed something the public might have wanted to know. The soil inside the impact circle had lost almost all moisture and microbial life, something that does not occur from heat alone. The explanation that followed, insisting the phenomenon was consistent with natural environmental disturbances, answered nothing about how the circle became a sterile ring only minutes after landing. Transport crews moved the orb under heavy escort, avoiding major roads and using unmarked vehicles. 
The official narrative described this as standard procedure, but the internal urgency suggested something else. Scientists who saw the orb within the first 24 hours noted that it remained cold long after its descent, with temperature readings far below the surrounding environment. If the earliest observations contradicted the polished version released to the public, then the real question becomes what the deeper analyses revealed once experts finally examined the object up close. Those results would prove far stranger than anyone expected. The results you were never meant to see. Everything the government should have told you about the Buga sphere becomes most obvious when you look at the scientific tests that never made it into any official report. Once the orb reached controlled facilities, researchers began documenting results that were described privately as unprecedented, yet almost none of it reached the public in its original form. The first surprise came from standard imaging. X-ray scans showed interior structures that did not behave like solid metal. When the room cooled, reflections inside the sphere shifted position, as if smaller components rearranged themselves in response to temperature. Technicians noted that the interior lattice looked closer to a three-dimensional circuit than any natural pattern, with repeating shapes that formed a kind of geometric rhythm. Neutron diffraction tests later confirmed that the orb contained multiple nested shells surrounding several tiny microspheres each with its own magnetic signature. Although these findings were recorded, only a simplified diagram appeared in the public brief. The soil samples revealed even stranger results. Scientists who analyzed them reported a complete collapse of microbial activity within the landing ring. Under a microscope, the soil appeared bleached and dehydrated, almost polished. Chemical tests showed an absence of normal organic processes. This effect did not occur outside the circle. Nothing in the release statements addressed this sharp boundary, and the explanation of a natural disturbance failed to match what the lab observed. During the earliest handling, a local resident named Jose briefly touched the orb before authorities secured the area. He fell ill later that afternoon, describing dizziness, metallic taste, and skin tingling on the hand that made contact. Doctors documented the symptoms, but omitted them from the central file. Officials later said no civilian had suffered adverse effects, even though internal emails referenced his case directly. The object also reacted to sound. At a university lab, researchers testing acoustic responses played several frequency patterns, including ancient Sanskrit hymns used for harmonic studies. Instruments registered a subtle but repeatable shift in the orb's electromagnetic output. The change appeared only during specific vocal intervals, suggesting the orb responded to structured resonance rather than random random noise. The data was documented, but the results were quietly marked as non-essential and removed from the final report. Finally, a low-frequency pulse recorded during overnight monitoring revealed that the orb briefly drew small amounts of ambient energy, roughly the output of a household light bulb. No explanation was reached, and the observation was filed away without public mention. Each of these findings formed a pattern that was never acknowledged in full. The sphere behaved like a device built with intention, reacting to temperature, sound, and environment. It stored information, altered the space around it, and responded to stimuli no ordinary material should recognize. The deeper implications only became clear once quantum specialists examined it, and their results changed the direction of the entire investigation the part they never intended anyone to understand. By the time the quantum team stepped in, the investigation had already revealed pieces of a puzzle that officials never explained to the public. But the missing clarity, the gaps in every statement, and the selective release of data all pointed to a bigger truth. What people were allowed to hear was only a fraction of what the sphere actually represented. And this is where everything the government should have told you becomes unavoidable, because the most revealing information was not found in the initial scans, but in what happened when the object was examined at the quantum level. Only then did researchers understand why so many details were kept quiet, and why the full picture mattered far more than anyone realized. So here's everything you need to know. The breakthrough came when a fragment from the orb's inner layer was tested using a next-generation quantum computer. The device captured a structured burst of data that did not resemble any known storage system. Instead of digital patterns, the fragment produced what analysts described as holographic spatial maps three-dimensional projections encoded within quantum states. These maps displayed structures that resembled star distributions and cosmic filaments, along with fractal sequences that matched the statistical noise of the cosmic microwave background. In simple terms, the fragment appeared to store snapshots of the universe itself, preserved with a level of precision no terrestrial technology could achieve. 
The fragment also behaved like an active information node. Measurements suggested it was entangled with something beyond Earth, responding to non-local signals in patterns that repeated on a predictable cycle. The idea that this tiny component was part of a paired system raised questions that no agency wanted to discuss publicly. If the sphere operated as a communication tool, an archive, or a navigation device, then its presence in Buga was not random. It was placed or delivered with purpose. Energy measurements supported this interpretation. The orb drew roughly 100 watts from its environment in a steady, continuous pull, enough to maintain internal processes without any visible power source. It also manipulated its own weight, displaying a negative mass effect that made its readings fluctuate in ways no material on record can replicate. When technicians analyzed the encoded maps, they found something else. Layers of information folded within themselves like nested pages. Some contained mathematical frameworks describing physical constants as variables rather than fixed laws. That discovery, coupled with the fractal sequences, led researchers to a single unifying interpretation. The sphere was built around principles suggesting that the structure of reality behaves less like rigid physics and more like adjustable parameters. It was as if the device operated within a universe that could be tuned, not merely observed. This interpretation circulated privately and was considered too destabilizing to release. The most dramatic event occurred when Kronos, an advanced quantum AI system, attempted to decode one of the deeper layers. It processed the data for several minutes before collapsing into catastrophic failure. Analysts later said the information did not break the system through overload. Instead, it presented a framework that contradicted core assumptions embedded in Kronos's logic, creating an internal conflict it could not resolve. Whatever the orb contained, it challenged the foundations of how the universe was understood. These findings, taken together, form the complete picture that was never shared. The sphere is not simply a technological artifact. It is an information system that treats reality itself as something that can be stored, interpreted, and possibly altered. Now the question shifts from what the sphere is to what its appearance set in motion. The consequences began almost immediately, and they reached far beyond Columbia. The silence after the reveal. The moment researchers understood the sphere was not inert technology, but an active information system. Agencies around the world shifted their posture. The conversation moved from curiosity to containment, and the silence that followed became as important as the discoveries themselves. Within days of the failed Kronos decoding attempt, access to the orb changed. Labs that once collaborated freely were locked down. Teams were dissolved or reassigned without warning. Several researchers who had worked on the quantum analysis reported that their notes, backup copies, and digital logs were suddenly inaccessible. One described the experience as watching an entire branch of inquiry vanish in real time. None of this appeared in public statements, which continued to frame the investigation as routine. International interest intensified. Intelligence reports indicated that foreign governments attempted to obtain classified summaries of the findings. Small groups of unmarked personnel were seen near the restricted zones surrounding the storage facility. Colombian authorities publicly insisted security was stable, yet internal memos showed concern about attempts to breach the perimeter. The idea that the sphere represented a breakthrough was no longer theoretical. It was treated as a strategic asset. At the same time, sightings of similar orbs began appearing in scattered reports across the world. Metallic spheres were seen near coastal regions, deserts, and mountain ranges. Some hovered motionless, others moved with unusual patterns. Most were dismissed as misidentified drones, although military sensors recorded objects with signatures that did not match any known aircraft. This wave of sightings raised a question that official channels avoided entirely. If the Buga sphere was part of a network, then its activation might have signaled other components. The most guarded detail came from NASA. During a short window, when the sphere emitted a low-frequency hum, subtle fluctuations were detected in the density of Earth's radiation belts. Engineers traced the disturbance to the exact moment the sphere activated. NASA quietly suspended all active tests, citing technical reviews. No public explanation linked the two events, despite the timing being identical. 
Attempts to control the narrative spread quickly. Footage from the night of the activation disappeared from several platforms. Journalists who tried to connect the soil anomalies, energy draw, or Sanskrit response received limited cooperation from officials. The additional findings were simply too difficult to dismiss, yet no agency acknowledged them. These reactions hinted at something deeper than secrecy. They suggested uncertainty, perhaps even fear, about what the sphere could still do. If the object held information that challenged fundamental assumptions about physics, energy, or the universe itself, governments were left with a dilemma. Admitting what had been uncovered meant admitting they did not understand everything they were trying to contain. What happened next shaped how the world interpreted the sphere from that point forward, because the consequences did not stop at classification. They extended into geopolitics, security decisions, and global perception. The question became not just what was found, but what the sphere had already set in motion. What the world is left with now. Once the initial secrecy hardened and the investigation slipped behind closed doors, the sphere's influence did not fade. Instead, it reshaped conversations within governments and scientific communities in ways that never reached ordinary people. The object remained locked away, but its implications continued to ripple outward, forcing officials to confront questions they were not prepared to answer. None of this mirrored the calm and measured updates released publicly. Behind the scenes, the discovery rewired assumptions about technology, information, and humanity's place in the wider universe. Scientists who saw the deeper data were left with the same conclusion. The orb was not debris, not a malfunctioning device, and not a passive artifact. It behaved like a system built to store and process reality itself, folding astronomical information into structures more precise than anything humans had engineered. Those findings pushed several researchers to revisit long-standing models of physics, reconsidering whether constants were fixed or variable, and whether the framework of the universe operated like a set of adjustable and instructions. None of these discussions appeared in academic journals. They continued privately, in meetings where access was granted to only a handful of experts. Governments faced a different problem. The sphere challenged national control. If it responded to resonance, manipulated its own weight, and produced signals tied to phenomena outside Earth, then no nation could fully claim ownership. Geopolitical pressure increased as countries argued for shared oversight, while simultaneously trying to secure fragments of information. The uncertainty created an unusual global standoff. Everyone wanted answers, but no one wanted to admit they had none. For the public, the silence created a vacuum. People knew something had landed, something had been taken, and something had changed, but the official narrative never connected those events. Instead of clarity, the world was left with scattered reports, incomplete statements, and speculation filling the gaps that institutions refused to address. What remains is simple. The Buga sphere forced humanity into a new stage of awareness, one where the boundary between known and unknown shifted overnight. And even though the object sits in isolation, inactive for now, its presence continues to raise a question no government has resolved. If this was only the first device to reach Earth, what might follow? Let us know what you think in the comments, and subscribe to our channel for more.